Hello YouTube, how are we all doing? Um, yes, my hair is incredibly long and messy. That is because it's April 2020 and we are in a period of lockdown because of the coronavirus, hence my long, messy hair. And on that note, before I go any further, I'd just like to say thank you to all of our key workers, um, in particular the NHS, but all of our key workers. That involves carers and supermarket workers and delivery drivers. Thank you so much for keeping us safe and um, hopefully we'll be through this very, very soon. Okay, so um, today what I wanted to talk about is why I use a budget smartphone. Um, I just, um, it, it's an interesting topic, phones, isn't it? And everyone's got their own preferences on things, and that's completely fine, and everyone's got their own opinions on it, and that is also completely fine. Everything I'm about to go through in this video is only my opinions. Um, it doesn't mean you have to follow or do what I say in any way, shape or form. I just wanted to put um, out there why I use a budget smartphone and uh, the pros and the cons, of course, of that. So a little bit of context to begin with. I think that's always important when I'm doing a video about a kind of review or thoughts on which to give context behind that opinion, because otherwise you'd just be like, this just makes no sense. So. First and foremost, my relationship with mobile phones um, kind of isn't great. I'm not that bothered about mobile phones. I love my tech. I love my fancy new kind of um, solutions and I love productivity and I love processes and I love the technology to improve all them things. But I've always struggled with mobile phones because more often than not, they're a bit of a hindrance to me rather than any benefit. So... Um, just to be clear here, like in the right kind of solution, I love the preview and stuff. I love Microsoft Surface keyboards. I love Pixel Books. Um, they're all higher end products. So in the right scenario, I do like a higher end product. But with phones, I'm not bothered. And I'll go through all that now um, just to get to the bottom. If you do need or <laughs> you feel you need the latest and greatest and the best smartphone, that's fine. That's your choice, but just hear me out as to why a budget smartphone is also completely and utterly fine. Um, so in the past, I suppose, a um, little, bit, little bit of history, I have had iPhones in the past. Um, uh, that was many, many, many years ago, and I did go through a phase of using iPhones, but I moved away from them. I didn't mean kind of, kind of, I want to say the word lockdown, that doesn't seem appropriate at the moment, but I didn't mean locked into the into the Apple ecosystem where they like won't set you free from that. And at the time, you the iPhone use um, was heavily linked to iTunes and you always had to sync up to that to do anything with your phone. It just blew my mind. And I had to, I had to evacuate away from iPhones for, for that reason. Also, because with each iOS update, the iPhone ground to a halt and it turns out Apple were in fact slowing phones down. Nice of them to do that, isn't it? To force people to buy new ones. Um, very, very nice, that is. Um, and generally, it stopped just working as a phone. Um, it might have been have all these wonderful apps, but I struggled to make calls on it. So I evacuated that, moved over to Android. I've never looked back. I've had various Android handsets over the years. Just off the top of my head, I've had some, um, I think I've had a Google Pixel in the past. I want to say it's a Google Pixel, maybe an old one. I've had them. I've had a number um, of other budget smartphones like the Motorola uh, G series, I think. I've used a few of them. They're, gr they're really good phones. Um, and more uh, recently, over the last few years, I've been sold on Sony phones and in particular the Xperia series, which I'll go through now. Absolutely love them. Um, so yeah, that's where that's where I'm at. A bit of context, but yes, just to stress here is I'm not I'm not heavily actually into phones. I can not see my phone for a few days, and that doesn't worry me, doesn't bother me um, in any way, shape, or form. Um, if I was to lose or break my phone, I'm not fussed because I have a budget phone. I'll just buy another one. So. So the, the bit of context there, uh, and I think that that's important just to put across my relationship with mobile phones. I'm not tied to it. I'm not chained to it. I'm not that fussed about it um, in any way, shape or form. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so basically where we're at is um, I use a, a, a budget smartphone. And the reason I do that is because 
of the reasons I just touched on my relationship with phone, I can't warrant spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a mobile device which I neither worried about, which I'll probably lose, which I'll probably break. Um, and if it did cost me hundreds of pounds, I would be gutted, I'd be annoyed. Um, so, and I know I'm the type of person that will probably do one of them things. So I'm not gonna put myself through that, spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a device, which something bad's probably gonna to happen to it. Um, so that, that's first and foremost is, so that straight away, I'm just like, I ain't gonna spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on it. I know, for example, the, the iPhones, all of the recent ones, the very latest ones, the camera technology on them is amazing. They are superb, both for your filming and for your photographs. Truly awesome, unbeatable, amazing. I get that. I'm still not willing to spend a grand on a phone. It is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous in my opinion, but that's up to you. Um, so that was, that was the first thing. And likewise, you say, oh, it's okay though. I don't have to spend hundreds. I can sign up and get one for like 60, 70 quid a month. I'm not interested in that either. Just Just not interested. That's... That's I can do a hundred and one better things with that with that money than I can just having a mobile device. So I'll run through costs and stuff at the moment. So the grand reveal: what is my phone? This is my phone. This is a Sony Xperia X Compact, and it's been my phone for about two two and a half years. Um, so why did I choose this particular phone? Well, first and foremost. Um, Again, I'm probably a little bit opposite to most people here. I'm not a fan of these really big smartphones and they seem to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger, don't they? Um, and I've had it myself in the past. I used to have an Xperia um, Z series and that was a really big phone. And it gets to the point where I can't even get the thing in my pocket and it's just like, and I hate having stuff in my pockets in general. And, you know, I get to see people walking into the pub, member pubs before lockdown, going, hello, how are you doing? Yeah, this is my phone. And just like, what, really? Is there any need for it to be that big? Um, so I looked for the smallest smartphone I could find, and this was it at the time. It's got a 4.7 inch screen, which is perfect for me. It fits in my pocket and I hardly notice it. It's small, it's thin, it's light. Um, and it's a 4.7 inch screen. It fits in my hand without a struggle. That is That was basically my number one requirement. I'm of, of of that thought process that it's more important for me to have something small. So that was the first very, very big tick there. And it's small and it's light. Battery life, given this is a small phone as well. Again, I don't like it when I see these people clucking every four hours for a mobile phone charger. This thing runs for a couple of days, no problem at all. And because I've got like this high speed charging cable for it, it goes from zero to 100% in like an hour. So even when I do need to charge it, an hour and I'm done and I'm good for a couple of days again. So that side of things is superb. Can't can't knock it for that. I can run, obviously, the latest version of Android on it. I can install all the apps I need for work, all the apps I want for social media and my personal stuff. Absolutely no problem at all. Performance-wise, responds, snappy, quick, no issues, no crashing. Absolutely and utterly fine. The camera on it, if you're into your photos, I'm not massively into it, but I do like a decent photo. And the camera, certainly in daylight and stuff like that, is amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's brilliant. Where it does let you down, and I'll be honest, is if you want to take photos in the dark, so to speak, or if you're out with friends in a pub or a club and you take a photo, it's a bit rubbish. It is a bit rubbish. I'm okay with that, though. Don't particularly care. Because somebody in the group you're with probably does have an iPhone. They'll take the photo and stick it on WhatsApp anyway. And you've got the photo of decent quality. So taking photos in the dark, no, it's not very good for that. That's fine. But let's put it into context. This phone was 60 quid. So the fact it takes amazing photos in the daylight and it's not very good in the dark for 60 quid, am I going to complain? No, of course not. Handset was 60 quid two years ago. Still going strong. I still throw it around everywhere. I don't have a cover or a case or anything. It just gets chucked around and it just works absolutely fine. So yeah, I looked around for a small budget smartphone and that one was 60 quid. 60 quid two years ago and it's still working absolutely fine. So not hundreds. And when I do inevitably lose or break this, 
because it cost me 60 quid two years ago. Do you think I'm going to be bothered? No, just get another one. It's absolutely fine. Um, in terms of what I'm paying per month, which is obviously the, the other cost factor here, um, it cost me eight pounds a month. That is for my unlimited calls, my unlimited texts, and a fair bit of data, which I don't use because I'm always on Wi-Fi anyway. I'm either, basically, I'm either at work or I'm at home or I'm on Wi-Fi in before lockdown, of course. I mean, I'm on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or a restaurant, or whatever it may be. Again, when people say, well, I need I need a 20 gig data package. I, I genuinely, I don't know why. I have no idea why people need that much data. It blows my mind. When are you not got Wi-Fi available to you, really? Um, so yeah, so eight quid a month it cost me. 60 pound for the handset and eight pounds a month. And it's still going strong. So, and I run my business from this. I did a photo on Instagram earlier this week when I was out, um, stood in the queue. Um, for the pharmacy, for lockdown, all that stuff. And I was genuinely running my business from this device. Genuinely was, because it's got all of my help desk stuff. It's got all of my account stuff on. It's got all of my remote support stuff on. It has my email on. It has everything I possibly need on that £60 device. I could I could run my entire business from it all the time if I really need to. So I hope this gives you a bit of food for thought. You don't necessarily need the latest and the greatest and the most expensive kit all the time. You don't. Um, you know, again, each to their own here, of course. But if you're somebody and, I don't know, you're looking to save some money, um, you're on a bit of a budget at the moment, and you're sat there and you're like, well, my phone costs me £60, £70 pounds a month. Why? Why are you paying that much? Just stop right now. Use one of them payments, buy a phone, get an eight, eight pound a month sim and off you go. That's it, job done. Um, so yeah, there's no need for it in my opinion. Um, like I said, there's nothing wrong with, you know, the great smart, the, the, the superb iPhones of this world. If that floats your boat and that keeps you happy and, you know, there is some clear benefits for you, legitimate benefits, that's fine. Each to their own here, that's completely fine. But I have no need for it and no reason I can possibly think of to to warrant having something like that. It just it just makes no sense to me. I don't I don't know why I'd need it. I genuinely have no idea. So hopefully this gives you a bit of food for thought. There's some absolutely wonderful, superb budget smartphones out there. It's not just this one. There's there's loads at this price point, absolutely loads to choose from. Like I said before at the start of the video, I've had some Motorola phones, budget ones, amazing phones absolutely superb it's just a fact i've got a little bit of a preference for sony at the moment um so yeah get out there check them out save yourself some money and it might even make you more productive who knows so get that checked out so i hope this helps you in some way if nothing else it gives you food for thought this isn't for everybody i get that um but if it has helped any way or made you chuckle perhaps please do smash the like button it helps grow our channel helps spread the word about us and so please do that please subscribe to our channel we're releasing new content all the time um, at this point again it's april 2020 and we are in lockdown at the moment i just wanted to say thank you again to all the key workers all of the nhs staff um, for helping keep us safe and down below the video is all of the links to connect with me. Please comment on the video. Tell me about your budget smartphones and I'll get back to you as and when I can. And check out the links below the video to connect with me on LinkedIn and Instagram and Twitter. And I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.